You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're gonna be going over my grand finals game. My grand finals game from the Players Cup 2. So luckily I was able to get the permission to show these awesome games to you, kind of explain my side of how I played out every single move, and hopefully it allows you to see some growth as a player as well. I mean, this video is a little bit of a long one because I did have to reset the bracket. No surprise, like, I mean, it's one of those things, like, I won the Players' Cup now for, like, over a month, um, and so, I mean, I won, but I'll, I'll show you exactly how it happens, all the plays, my mistakes, everything in between. If you think this video is cool, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you want to know anything, or if you're looking for a discount code for some PTCGO codes, go to ptcgostore.com, you get the link below, plug in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. I mean, it should be some exciting gameplay, Brent Tonneson, absolutely one of the best players in the entire game, um, so having the chance to play against him in the finals of something as big as the Players' Cup 2 often makes this title more prestigious for me. I think it's an awesome opponent. It's cool to play against some amazing opponents along the way. So let's jump into this gameplay, see exactly what's up, and see how the game's turned out. So for those of you who've been watching this series, I appreciate you first and foremost for getting this far. For me, it's been crazy to get this far playing in the Grand Finals against Brent Tonneson, one of the best players in the game. Um, and I mean, for me, I felt like I was going into this matchup at a disadvantage. I felt like my list might have been better than Brent's at the time. Um, I really went with the Mewtwo's. Brent went with the big charms. So that does allow me to do some interesting plays here. Now, Brent's not necessarily getting a great start here, but the reason why I felt like it was such a kind of hill to kind of climb or battle to overcome is I had to not only win the series, I had to reset the bracket as well. Um, so resetting the bracket basically just meant I'd have to win against Brent, and then that would allow me to advance to from the loser's bracket to just the winner's bracket at that point, overcome everything, and then play the whole series again. So, like, that sounds like a lot of fancy words to basically be like, yeah, I literally had to win the finals twice um, against one of the best players in the game. I know that Brent's testing group, um, very strong Pikaram players. And it's really one of those things, like, how am I able to overcome this? Now, my start here is was pretty rough, um, just like kind of draw passing. But since Brent doesn't play Mewtwo, I will have more options than Brent in this matchup because my Mewtwo has more HP than his Raichu, Lolan Raichu, and his Pikaram. Um, the only po way for him to get more HP on board would be if Raichu, Lolan Raichu were to have a big charm on it. And that being said, it's really not that big of a deal here. Um, you can see that he's, he's getting a little bit of a rough start and I'm trying, I'm kind of able to just like overcome this fairly quickly. Um, my hand's quite strong now. And this is a really good way for me to kind of reset this game. Because for me going first, that almost feels like a death sentence in this matchup. It's it's difficult to win a game going first when you're playing Pika, especially in Pika Mirror. Because it, it's such a huge advantage using Electrify going second. Um, not that it's a big deal, but this allowing me to win a game going first is absolutely huge. Um, and it, it, it further pushes Brent's advantage away. So going here strong, um, kind of cornering the first attack off on a tag team is huge. And Brent's just going to concede. And I'm just going to, I just try to be nice. Uh, hello, good luck. All that good stuff before any any game starts. You know, it's a, it's a grand finals match. Now there's no additional prizing on the line. It's really for all of the glory here. And here you look at my hand and I'm like, uh, awesome. I'm going first again, uh, starting with Raichu. Where are my energy cards, right? Uh, I only play so many of them. So this is really one of those hands where it's like, I don't really want, like, I don't think I should have played um, that at all. I don't, I don't think it makes sense to play the quick ball. I mean, maybe in a way it does because my opponent can play Marnie. But at the same time, um, I could have held on to it in case, like just for further things. I am going through here and checking through my prize cards. I don't feel like enough players do. A lot of players are like, "Yo, how how do you check your? How do you do well in Pokemon tournaments? How I consistently know the resources I have remaining in a game. 
um if maybe maybe it's something i'll cover in the channel in the future how to properly check through your prize cards might be um an interesting topic let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd want to watch but here i'm just going to switch into the bolton actually i think that's probably the correct play because now in order for brent to get around this not only does brent need to find a switch or an air balloon they'd also have to find a boss's orders to kind of reset my play and if they were to have a marnie if brent were to have a marnie um i mean i'm in a pretty good position here uh to set up for next turn so a little bit of a sloppy start uh, on my behalf but that's okay there's nothing else that i could have done i'm going first had a pretty rough hand uh those crushing hammers were hope will hopefully reset brent's board state now the big charm going on the pika is huge here um for me because i don't think the, the math doesn't really matter here i mean the big charm math doesn't really matter at all because i'm able just to go um attack attack 150 plus 150 just using the full blitz is kind of a bar is like 150 150 is 300 even if it's a raichu alolan raichu there's no healing cards in this deck my pokemon should be able to just two shot these pokemon anyways i wasn't really planning on a one shot um the big charm's only going on the peak around to prevent a lightning ride gx doing 250 to that pokemon so i'm i'm here trying um everything that i possibly can to get set up my my this isn't bad by any means and i do have an energy um, the crushing hammer is not really working in my favor, but you want to what? That's not a bad turn. Um, I am going to be able to electrify some energies here, and I think I'm going to attach into Mewtwo. Mewtwo is always just the correct choice whenever your opponent does not play Mewtwo. Otherwise, it's it's difficult in the Pikaram mirror, but I do have my series where you can kind of test, uh, where I kind of show all the matchups for Pikaram and how they typically go. And I've been, I mean, I've been playing Pikaram for the entirety of the Players' Cup 2 Global Finals. So hopefully you've been, you've been able to pick up a thing or two about this matchup or the matchup spread at Pikaram. So Brent's just kind of rolling in those energies right now. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find a switch here, something like that. That'd be huge. I think I could just go uh, the speed lightning energy because I can often just get extra energies on my other Pokemon. Um, I don't know entirely like what I'm thinking here. I know I want to use Tapu Koko Prism Star. I'm just debating which card like how do i want to discard things um and maybe i want to grab the pikaram just to discard the pikaram checking to see what i have left and i'm just gonna thin uh my hand away so this is fine um there's no reason for me to do anything else except play that down so i mean i'm gonna be getting an attack off on the Pikaram first, which is usually, um, which, which usually is enough to win this matchup. Now I'm looking at the amount of games left and I'm like, how, how was this game lost for me? Uh, because like, I remember literally playing this game thinking that like, oh cool, I'm actually able to overcome, um, Bren's very strong start compared to my relatively poor start and everything seems to be going fine. Um, maybe the Dene GX was a little bit too much there. I don't know what I was actually searching for beyond maybe, an air balloon i think that's probably why i played it and just going for the full blitz there to get my extra energies in play so i have a pretty set up board um trying to think exactly where this goes wrong because i should be able to win this game in the next um i should be able to attack the pikaram so that's one turn and then i should be able to two shot the raichu so i win the game in three turns i don't necessarily see how brent wins the game um quicker than that so, and I have a decent bit of energies too. Like this game looks very favorable for me. So I'm excited to like relive this moment and be like, what caused me to lose? Is it going to be the crushing hammers? And I mean, obviously I'm not going to review the footage that I already played before I commentate it. So I'm not trying to go in here blinds, uh, but just kind of going in live. So there's a crushing hammers. So obviously it wasn't that one that sealed the deal. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight energies on my opponent's side. So that seems huge. Um, just getting extra energies in play. Here I think it's worthwhile for me to just build up my Raichu, Alolan Raichu. That's the only other Pokemon that's relevant. Marnie seems simple enough. I lower my opponent's hand. I get a better hand. Um, the boss order seems very nice here too. And I'm debating, like, do I want to try to keep my energy in play? 
So I'm going to retreat here, um, get the free knockout with the Raichu alone and Raichu, doing Tandem Shock, which to me I think is great. I'm trying to um, allow my Pokemon to stay alive longer in the game. I have more energies in play than my opponents. I have four, six, seven, eight, nine energies. So there's a Crushing Hammerheads. <laughs> and that's going to wipe off my Boltons. So, I mean, that's step one of coming back here for Brent. Now the Marnie, reducing my hand size. And, I mean, if you look at my hands, I think this is basically what happened. My opponent got double Crushing Hammerheads and played Marnie. And I did not get very good cards here. So, this is really where games can kind of spiral out of control. Now, looking back now, it might have been more worthwhile... Um, I should have maybe looked into how many crushing hammers Brent had left versus how many switch I had left because if my Mewtwo would have gotten knocked out, I would have had a better chance of survive. I would have been, had a better chance to go tandem shock. The issue he is here is that I don't necessarily have access to attacking my opponent. So Brent robbed a turn from me, um, which just makes it absolutely terrible. Um, so now Brent wins the game in two turns and they're playing their game. So they, they effectively gain an extra turn. So I need to like Tandem Shock Reset Stamp to one, which is huge. And you can see with the limited cards that Brent has left, it's, it's looking particularly good for Brent at this moment. So I think Brent's just gonna go here, attack with the Boltons, try to even take another turn out of the game. And for me, I have the boss orders. I have reset stamp. So my play is simply going to be reset stamp Brent. Hopefully Brent gets nothing in the nicest way. I mean, when you're when you're reset stamping your opponent, you don't want to be like, yeah, I hope they got everything. You, you try to be nice, but this is tandem shock. And if, if they have it, they have it. Um, if they don't, they don't. Now with the amount of cards, I'm sure that Brent kind of has been able to get around things. There's the Crobats. And you can see I'm just waiting for it. And Brent's definitely going to be able to perfectly thin out his deck and kind of jump it back into the driver's seat. But here, luckily for me, I'm able to go second. And this is really what I'm hoping for. I have went first and first. Second is great um, for this deck. Now, my hand's not particularly um, amazing to go second with. But I am going second. I do have a... Speed Lightning, I do have a access to a Boltoned. I do have access to a Dedenne if necessary. So depending on what my top deck is, I got some pretty good options here, and I can't complain. The thing that's scary about this game, the one thing that was racing through my mind is, I want to become the Player's Cup 2 champion. That's awesome, right? But uh, if I lose this game, I I'm instantly coming second place. At least Brent still has, if he loses this game, has the opportunity to still make it out. So... Re resetting the bracket is a little bit tough in double elimination. Um, it's something that I might, I, I'd like to see changed, um, especially since other zones, like the zone that Brent is from, has um, a lesser requirement. And when I say lesser, I, I don't, no, I, I don't mean that no one from Australia or Oceania region doesn't, doesn't. Um, they everyone here belongs. Everyone earned their spot to get here, but there were less rounds for the Oceania region due to a lack of residents in that area or lesser play Pokemon um, participants in that general rating zone. So I, I, I don't necessarily know what Brent's entire record was. Um, what I can assume, it, it, it was likely a few rounds less than North America, Latin America, and Europe, which can definitely add up. If you think about, like, think about all the times that you had to go undefeated at, like, a city championships or a league cup or something like that. If, if you only had to go two and O compared to someone else's five and O or three and O to compare it to someone else's six and O um, it does make some regions just the variance of the game can definitely add up. Um, but again, Brent showing how strong they are as a competitor. I mean, Brent had a few really stand out performances. This being one of the biggest yet. Um, it's just huge. 
But kind of jumping back to the game, um, Brent with the crushing hammers, I mean, we want to see them go early. Um, that, that's kind of the way that I look at it. The earlier your opponent's playing crushing hammers, at least there's less variance in the late game. Um, and I'd rather be focusing on like exact percentages late game, not being like how I lost last game when Brent was able to go crushing hammer heads, crushing hammer heads, Marnie, which absolutely just tore up everything that I had going for me. So here, I'm just going to discard some cards. And I'm going to discard the Pika. I don't want to have Pika in play because they could always Lightning Ride GX my Pokemon. Um, so I should be able to get an, off an attack here first um, with Full Blitz, which to me seems pretty huge. I'm just trying to do some math here, trying to figure out exactly what's the best play. And Crushing Hammer, Tails. There's the Marnie. And I'm going to go Dance of the Ancients, get those energies in play. I still have quite a few energies in my discard pile, which is a little bit scary. Um, I do have my one energy left. But you all know what? I might as well... Like, the only way that I see that this is going to work out is that I attack here. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I want to put down... Do I want to put down another Mewtwo? Do I want to save that space open for a Dedenne GX? And like reasonably here, it's just difficult. Um, but I, usually in most games, you need to get two tag teams off. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, go for the full Blitz, power up that Mewtwo, one energy. And I'm kind of on a tightrope of, will my opponent have Crushing Hammer? Will they have other things going on for them? So the fact that I didn't get an attack off into a tag team is a little bit rough. But we'll see exactly what goes on for Brent here. Now, the reset stamp being down is huge. I don't want to deal with reset stamp um, as long as possible. I mean, it's just really one of those things where, like, reset stamp is a scary card, everyone. Like, the more scary cards that my opponent plays early makes it uh, huge for me. Now, there's the air balloon, and Brent is going to be able to get that attack off with full blitz into my tag team first, which quite often means that they're going to be put into a really good position. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six energies. A seventh energy in play, play doesn't get a knockout here with um, the Boltons. They would only do 220 damage. But I am able here to go, I think I'm going to go full blitz again. Or maybe, okay, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go uh, Tandem Shock. Which I think is a cute idea. I don't necessarily hate it. Because Tandem Shock could buy me another turn. We kind of saw how it happened last game. Now if Brent's unable to find Switch. I, I, I just basically can steal this game from Brent. Um, putting myself up an entire turn. Now. I, I think Brent's already used a couple Switches already. I think that's two Switches that I just saw there. Um, not being able to go Air Balloon or anything like that because of Paralysis. There's a speed lightning energy going on the Pika. And Brent did find the switch, which is huge for Brent. So here, I'm going to go ahead and send up the Boltons. And at this point, I don't see any reason not to go Marnie. Brent has seven, eight, seven cards in their hands. Um, I want to bring that down as low. How low can you go? And how do I really want to attack this game? So I'm going to continuously play the game of let's let's just go Tandem Shock. Let's see how it goes. No point of using Full Blitz. There's no energies left. Um, will Brent find an out? They already used the Switch last turn. I just Marnied them. We already, we already determined how good like just Marnie Tandem Shock is. Reset Stamp Tandem Shock. All these things just ruining their hands. So I gained an extra turn. And this is really where the game can become huge. I'm going to take an extra energy away. Um, I think maybe I'm maybe I'm going in with Team Yelgrunt. The Team Yelgrunt's an interesting play. I don't know entirely how I'm going to deal with this. I'm just trying to go through all my odds, make sure that there's no Tag Bolt GX option. I think it would have been a little bit better to just knock out... Um, the Raichu, Alolan Raichu, knowing what my opponent had left uh, for the resources here. 
Um, but that's okay. Uh, I'll have to see. Full Blitz is obviously my best choice. There wasn't energy left in the deck. And at this point, Bolton's the only Pokemon worthwhile to power up. Um, I'm not really threatened by Brent getting a knockout. It, it really just comes down to how is Brent going to kind of get back into this game. Okay, so Brent's going for an attack with the Bolton V, which can be huge. There's the Marnie. Putting those switches away, because I was I was anticipating the Tandem Shock. And I already had Wind Hand. Uh, so that, that kind of sucks. I, I was definitely trying to win there. And here, I, I can thin through my deck. And I'm like, cool, I got an opportunity to win this game. Um, I'm, I'm going to draw through about half of my deck. I have a 50% chance to basically win this game. And hope if, if Brent doesn't have boss. But there's the boss. I'm able to take the first set and reset the finals. So, I mean, a little bit shaky. Um, maybe maybe I should have attacked... Um, maybe I should have attacked the Pikaram instead of going after the Raichu. Or maybe I should have attached the Raichu. Like, I don't... I really don't know. At the end of the day, Brent attacked with the Boltons. So, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, that was Brent's in back into the game. And here... Um, it's a little bit of shaky, shaky hand. I am going second though, um, so that is one good thing to note. If I am able to draw something good, it's 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 huge. And the one good thing for me going into this match is that Brent's down an Eldegoss, and the Eldegoss can't come back unless it uses an attack. And I don't necessarily think that the attack's going to be huge here. Um, it, it's something where you just can't necessarily waste the energies to go on with Eldegoss's attack. So Brent's able to get set up, and that quick ball to me is just like, OMG, I can't believe I actually got the quick ball. Um, now I'm able to grab the Boltons, and I'm able to basically do what I want uh, this turn now. Um, if I, I would have been forced to go like the Dene GX to discard a lot of resources, that quick ball saved me a lot of resources on this side, which is absolutely fantastic for me. So... I, I don't think it's worthwhile for me to play the Cherish Ball yet. Um, I mean, at this point, it makes a lot more sense for me to just, like, play things out. Um, I'm going to pitch this entire hand at this point. But I am going to be able to grab some other resources here. So there's my Pika. There's my Raichu. I am going to grab the Dedenne. And I'm going to pitch the whole hand away. I got access to Mewtwo. I think I'm completely fine here. So I'm going to go ahead, pitch resources, grab a Tapu Koko. I can totally uh, go Dance of the Ancients here first. The reason why I'm going Dance of the Ancients first before going Crobat is because I am going to use Energy Switch to power up my Mewtwo very quickly. And there's that switch. For me, I'm like fist pump in the air. Uh... I started my turn with five energies. Brent started with zero because of Crushing Hammer. And I still have a Marnie. And Brent's down to four cards. Um, my hand's not necessarily strong after that. But it doesn't necessarily have to be too strong um, at this point. And I'm debating on where do I want to attach my energies. Do I want to split it between my Mewtwo's just in case of Crushing Hammers? But here, um, I, I'm just uh, putting it one and one just in case brent were to get those crushing hammers or something like that um, i do have to be careful on what could happen here so there's there's the quick ball brent's going to be able to go into an electrify this turn but i have uh i got options here if i'm able to find a boss orders i'm in a very good spot i could tack into that peak around first um otherwise i can just kind of vibe out i know that electrify is kind of off the table yeah, I really don't see how I'm not going to play Crushing Hammer here. There's Crushing Hammer. Let's get the heads. That sounds awesome. Um, I don't think it's worthwhile for me. Like, maybe I just go into an attack with Bolton. I honestly don't remember how I deal with this situation. Because there's not really much of a threat. And I really want to stay with the Bolton in the active spot. There's not many energies left. Um, not being able to get the knockout here sucks. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but this this seems to work out fine. Um, it's it's literally just the best play. If I had if I had access to boss orders, I'd be bossing up that Pikaram. 
Um, so yeah, so close. You can see being uh, one damage short on the knockouts. And Brent's really in a position where they have, Brent has three energies in play. I have six energies. And then just going with the Electrify, um, the Electrify makes it really awkward for Brent's. At this point, I don't, I don't really know what else I'm really looking for. There's, I think, attaching to the Mewtwo here to the left is the most correct choice. Just building up more energies in play. And going ahead here, I mean, I don't know how I want to really react to this situation. Um, yeah, I'm like, do I want to play Energy Switch? I need to watch out for that Tapu Koko, basically, because Brent can kind of overcome my board state, can do 200 damage to a bolt end, and I basically want to hold on to my energies so that I can just knock out a Pigarom with a bolt end. So, sending up the elect the Eldegoss V sounds good here. Another Crushing Hammer Tails, and I mean, I, I feel pretty pretty good about my board state like Brent has four energies I now have seven energies in play um and this is really just like huge for me I'm up two prize cards Brent is about to take an attack here but it seems like Brent's gonna go with the Tapu Coco V which is an interesting tech I remember thinking how cool this tech was at the time because it's great against Boltons um it, it's it's kind of faded out of popularity but there's the 200 damage and I have boss's orders. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually don't even have the knockouts. I don't think. I think I just go Bolt Storm. Because uh, I can't knock out the Pika. I was one energy away from knocking out the Pika because of the big charm. But this seems uh, pretty good if you ask me in terms of things. Like, I'm just a boss orders away from winning the game. You usually go knockout on two tag team Pokemon in this matchup. Or you go knockout, knockout, knockout on two prize card, two prize card, two prize card. So, Bren being able to reset stamp me. Gotta give the angry face anytime my opponent plays a reset stamp. Another crushing hammer tails, uh, just setting Brent back again. And I got options. I really like air balloon and quick ball. I'm going through my discard pile, seeing what's up. And there is the Crobat. Um, so I'm going to set up Crobat because Crobat, everything else basically has energies. And I have the boss orders to win the game with my Mewtwo. So being up now in the actual reset bracket grand finals, absolutely huge. I'm going to be at the disadvantage because I'm going to be going first again here. Um, but maybe I can get a good start and finish the series early. It is it is a it is a difficult matchup for sure, um, but starting starting with a Raichu is not bad. And again, if 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 someone gets a rough start in this matchup, any you can win if you go first or second. It doesn't necessarily matter. So I found my energy. Things are looking good. There's Cherish Ball. Um, and I don't know if using Cherish Ball for Pikaram is fine. I think it seems fine. I, I can just discard it with um, a Quick Ball attached to a Mewtwo uh, this turn. Because you always want to attach to Mewtwo just because it's a Pokemon that you could build up with Tapu Koko Prism Star. Stuff like that. I do have access to my Tapu Koko Prism Star. So I wouldn't be surprised here if I grabbed a Mewtwo right away. To me, I think Mewtwo sounds like a really good choice. I want to get the boss orders to my discard pile. <laughs> there's my energy onto the Mewtwo, so I am playing correctly here. And at this point, I'm like, do I want to discard my hand, use the Dene GX? Um, I, I think I could probably hold it if I really wanted to. Maybe that's maybe that's too conservative, especially given what I have going on here. Um, but I mean, I'm fine with my hand. Um, it's one of those things where, I guess, in a matchup where I'm already behind and going first, I'd consider myself behind in this matchup. Especially with Brent starting with the Boltons, I put myself in a position where maybe I will get those double crushing hammer heads. Or maybe I will draw a very good combination of cards for next turn. So I mean, for me, I think I, I don't necessarily need to play as conservatively as I'd want in this matchup or anything like that. It doesn't necessarily matter. 
Um, Brent just going with that Marnie. Putting those cards away and kind of leaving me with a little bit of a dead hand here. Um, which is going to put me a little bit behind. But again, that's fine. I'm already up one game. I don't necessarily have to worry about everything too, too much. Okay, so Brent just going for the Electrify. That's super cool. Uh, I'm going to go Speed Lightning Energy. There's really not much else for me to do here. I don't want to bring up anything. I'm just going to go ahead and go Electrify. And Electrify is going to be going both energies, I think, over to the Mewtwo on the left. Just because you always got to account for a, a Crushing Hammer and Team Yelgrunt um, when you're playing in these type of matchups. And it's open list. Um, if you're playing in an open list event and you're trying to decide where to attach the energies, just determine what's in your opponent's deck. Um, if, if you don't have to necessarily worry about a Pokemon and once it's all powered up, even if I had a fourth energy, it might be worthwhile for me to power up there. But with the cards that I have in my hands, I feel pretty okay. Um, now I need to hope, basically, in all cases, that Brent's not able to chip into my Mewtwo before it gets off. Because uh, that'd be incredibly scary for me to deal with. But here we go. Mewtwo's going to get attacked into... And all right, so there's the attack off into the Mewtwo. And for me, I'm just like, cool. Uh, I don't really have too many other outs here. I might as well power up. Um, I need to use Speed Lightning. Let's power up the Bolton first. And the reason why I'm powering up Bolton first is because I can just go full blitz onto my Raichu. Um, here it seems like it might be better for me to att I, I honestly just don't know my hands like really awkward i could retreat attack with boltons um full blitz seems really good i wish i had a marty to put those energies at the bottom of my deck but at this point there's not much else that i really want to be doing or dealing with so brent sounded two cards in his hands how am i going to jump back into this game there's Tapu Koko. Where do I want to attach my energies? Uh, probably just to the Dedenne and to the Raichu. I just discarded three of them. I'm just really debating on how I want to deal with this. My whole thing was like, how can I kind of vibe another hits? I don't want to sacrifice my Boltons. I'm, I'm trying to find a way to kind of like jump in and out of this game. I have boss orders. I have Eldegoss. Um, so I got some outs here. Um, Brent getting double crushing hammerheads really, really, really hurts. And not only one crushing hammerheads, not only two, all three crushing hammerheads, really taking my chances of knocking out that Pikaram from Brent's bench just away from me. Because Brent, again, is three turns away from winning this game. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now they're two turns away from winning this game. So really getting the knockout on my Raichu just felt like that was a terrible turn, if you ask me. There's really not much else that I can deal with. I, I, I honestly don't know how I'm going to win this game or how I play it, like what my what my game plan was. Um, when in doubt, uh, do your best. But this is a, really a game where I felt like going through the motions of just Pokemon... Uh, my hopes and dreams of winning that game were kind of stripped away in a single turn. And that's standard format for you. It's going to happen. Um, cards like Crushing Hammer can often be electrifying. And I'm, I like, I, I don't see how I'm winning this game remotely. Uh, there, maybe there's more Crushing Hammer heads that I can get. Maybe that was my game plan. Okay, there's the energy switch. I could bring it back. There's a crushing hammerheads there. So, I mean, this was a pretty good, like, comeback mechanic where I'm like, okay, I'll attack with a two prize card Pokemon. Uh, not really many crushing hammers left on Brent's side. I got options. Maybe I could tandem shock to win the game in a future turn. Another crushing hammer. Like, there's cards here that are give definitely giving me the opportunity to win. Um, Brent's being a a boss orders away from winning the game essentially at this point and we'll see exactly what goes on here so marnie means that i'm not losing the game this turn and there's the reset stamp i mean i can't necessarily complain about this hand either there's a bolton the bolton's gonna attack with bolt storm 
and here it legitimately felt like I had, like, I felt like I had a shot. The Crushing Hammer uh, definitely sucked a little bit there. I do you have access to the boss's orders? I am going to go boss orders there. And I'm going to try my best here. So there's Crushing Hammers, taking it away. Just trying to remove any opportunities that Brent had to win the game. And I'm like, cool. Let's go Hard Retreat. Let's go into a Tandem Shock. If Brent does not find anything, I, I just win the game. And I'm discarding cards from my hand to give myself a better chance of just winning this game, especially if Brent were to go Reset Stamp or Marnie. But there's the switch. Um, it is what it is. We're moving on to game three of the Reset Final Bracket. So this 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 game is going to decide who's going to win the Players' Cup 2 Championships. And I'm going second. Um, definitely not a bad hand. Really awkward with those crushing hammers, though. Um, and not having a Pokemon to instantly electrify to. But Brent did give me some options here. So starting with the Boltons, having the Raichu down, I, I have no complaints about this start. I didn't start with like an Eldegoss or a Dedenne GX. Like that Dedenne GX is just crossed off of Brent's list at this point. Um, no Dede change coming out of that one. It's a wasted bench spot. Might come back and bite Brent later. Obviously being forced to start with cards like that is going to happen from time to time. Um, but again, I just try to, you, when I'm looking at the game, I just try to look at all the opportunities. So with two Dedenne GX being in play, no opportunity for Dedenne GX again. And here, I'm just like, okay, cool. Let's go speed lightning energy. Let's see what happens. Crushing hammer it could be cute. At this point, air balloon seems good. Um, Raichu alone and Raichu seems good. And Marnie seems like the best card that I could play at that time. Just really giving myself more options. Um, and I mean, this hand gives me resources for next turn. Maybe it would be nice to hold on to an energy or something like that. I don't know if, uh, if quick balls necessarily my best choice. I, I honestly don't remember what I grab here. I think grabbing Tapu Coco Prism Star is good. I'm checking through my prize cards for sure. Um... Just to see what I have left, what my options are. Yeah, Tapu Coco Prism Star seems like the best card that I could put down. And no matter what, I have Eldegoss for like a Marnie if things go wrong. I have uh, Electromagnetic Radar in case I won't need to pitch into a Dedenne GX. Like, my hand's given me options, but Brent's just going to go ahead and give me a Marnie. Um, and that hand has options too. I mean, with the quick ball, um, there's a crushing hammer heads from Brent's side, which can be huge. And a simple electrify Brent's up in energy, but I'm going to have access to an attacking turn here. Um, I'm debating on where I really want to discard my energy or how I want to deal with it. Discarding switch seems like the best choice right now for me. Um, there's nothing I really want to grab from my deck. I'm just trying to get a boss orders, if possible, to attack into that Pikaram before Brent ever gets that attack off with the Pikaram. It's going to put me in a much better position than Brent starting off the game. And now I can just go full blitz, power up my Pikar or power up my Raichu on the bench. So I have a lot more energies in play than Brent. I have access to Tapu Koko Prism Star. Lots of good things going on. And Brent's going to have to commit an energy to that Pikaram in order to attack. Um, okay, and just going for the energy switch play to grab an extra card off that Crobat. So, I mean, playing really well on Brent's side. Brent's not really making any mistakes here. Um, Brent definitely knows how to play Pikaram, especially making it this far. Brent knows how to play the Pikaram Mirror. Um, and for me, like, I'm just happy to be able to get that first hit off. I've been trying all series to make this play happen. So I'm going to go after two tag team Pokemon. That's definitely my goal here. So I've, I got one hit in. My goal is to win the game in the next three turns. So we'll see exactly if that works out. Um, but that, that was my current game plan going in here.
So there's the 150 back powering up that Tapu Coco. And Brent's basically trying to stop me from doing my three turn win. I mean, I don't know if there's too much else that I really need to worry about here. I'm like, yeah, I'll power up the for the Tapu Coco. I can get a Tapu Coco Prism Star Lightning Ride GX and knock out that Tapu Coco Prism Star on the, or Tapu Coco V on the bench. I don't really know what else there is for me to do here. I don't need another Mewtwo, maybe? I don't know. It's kind of an awkward game because I already have so much stuff going here and I don't necessarily want to waste my resources. I don't think I play anything else. I think I just... I don't know why I'm debating... I think I'm just trying to save this Mewtwo, if possible, save more energy in play, get off a huge attack with Boltons, um, and that's fine, it's interesting, um, sometimes, like, maybe I'm playing too conservatively, and I'm just going through to make sure what, I, what I've seen, what Brent's done so far. So I can go Tandem Shock here, Tandem Shock's gonna knock out the Pikaram. I don't need to worry about Tandem Shock again. I have Lightning Ride GX on deck um, and can quickly be up one to six prize cards by the end of my turn. So there's a Crushing Hammer. You love to see Tails when your opponent flips Tails. And there's the Marnie. The Marnie's going to take away my very good hands, leaving me with a lot less options than I'd like. Um, Air Balloon's kind of nice. I definitely don't have too many complaints about that. And... I don't know. Brent's... Is Brent going to... I think Brent's just going to attack with Bold Storm. Trying to win the game in the next two turns. I'm trying to win the game in the next two turns just by knocking out two prize card Pokemon. Um, so I'm going to go Air Balloon to the active. That's definitely the best thing that I possibly can do. Um, it's better for me to switch because I got more options with um, the air balloon there. And reasonably, um, I think I'm in a pretty good spot to just draw my remaining prize cards. If you think about all the things like, yeah, sure, Bren can deal with a Tapu Coco Prism Star, like Tapu Coco V. But how how do I, like, I got, I got options. So I'm going to get a knockout, really putting it into where I can win the game next turn. Brent needs to basically stop this and win the game um, in two in two turns to even keep up finding a boss's orders this turn and some way to kind of stop my hands. So no boss's orders there. So now Brent has to have at least three turns left in the game. Reset stamp, 2-1. Now getting a quick ball there for me is absolutely huge um, because I can get out a, a, a Dedenne if necessary. Now, Brent's just going to pass the quick ball there. For me, I, I just don't necessarily see any reason for me to do anything else. If I were to get an energy, I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. So a little bit of a gutsy move from Brent, leaving the Raichu one energy away. But um, it, it, does, it did give Brent an extra turn. So Brent still has to... Now it's two turns. So finding the boss orders there kind of gave Brent an extra turn in the game. And Brent can now win the game in one turn taking away a lot of my resources in the process and being able to knock it with a two prize card pokemon so in order for me to win the game i need to find boss's orders um and i mean i have 17 cards left in my deck it would have been really nice to just be like cool i have a boss orders um so I, i'm gonna have 16 cards left in my deck um it, the game went from really good to me getting unlucky and it getting really bad so I got the boss orders there, and sometimes you got the, a little bit lucky, and that's how you win the Player's Cup. All right, that's a wrap. And I mean, I guess that's kind of how uh, it all went down. Hopefully you all enjoyed the ride, and maybe I'll get a chance to record some more cool content like this in the future. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I mean, I think it's super cool to be able to share my journey. I've never had any tournament. Like, I've won a regional championships. I've like, come second at an international championships. Sure, you might have seen a snapshot of a few games, but this is really my journey um, from, the, from the top 16 players in the world all the way to the end of the event. 
So, I mean, I think it's really cool content, um, but hopefully I'll think the same thing. I mean, if you got it to this point, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, that being said, I do have a lot of great content planned on this channel. Really looking for the subscribers to try to finish up. I'm so close to getting to a thousand subscribers right now. Come on, y'all. You know we can make it. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate all the support from everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator. Thanks again and have yourself a great one.